Hello, International Praise family, friends, and guests. Welcome to our Sunday worship experience. My name is Manny Avales, and I am the executive pastor. And I'm his lovely wife. Stay tuned to hear what's happening here at International Praise. IP. IP. We have students who have verbalized to us a desire to grow deeper in their relationship with God, but the question remains the same all across the world. How do I do it? I don't know if you're in that place now or if you've ever been in that place. I know I have where I'm asking that question. How do I grow deeper in my relationship with God? Well, we have created a free online discipleship program to help with just that. It's super simple. It's easy to navigate and it's designed for structure and accountability in the secret place. We already have so many students signed up and ready to go and we're so excited. But guess what? We're opening it up to you too. We want this to be accessible to everybody because all of us are in need of deeper intimacy with Jesus. And some of us just need that structure and that accountability to be able to really get there. If you're interested and you want to learn more about it, you can follow the link on the screen or you can scan the QR code or you can go to the table in the foyer and you can sign up with your name and email address and I can send you some more information. And of course, if you see me around, you can always ask me questions about it. But we would love for you to jump onto this journey with us and we can all grow deeper in our relationship with Jesus. Hello, IP family. It's celebration time and we are planning to pack the house on Sunday, April 7th at both 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. services for our 22nd church and pastor's anniversary. All members should expect to receive the letter pertaining to this joyous occasion as you enter and exit the main foyer or see your elder to request an electronic copy via email. Sunday, April 7th, it's celebration time because we love our pastors. IP family, this week is Holy Week, and we want you to connect, share with others, and be a part of what's happening. On Monday, we have drive through prayer, 12 to 2 p.m. Tuesday, Outreach Food and Clothing Ministry, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Wednesday, Passover Seder, 6.30 p.m. Thursday, drive through prayer, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And Outreach Food and Clothing Pantry, 6 to 8 p.m. On Friday, we have Good Friday Night Worship and Communion. Saturday is our Outdoor Spring Bash and Treasure Hunt. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And Resurrection Sunday begins with 6.30 a.m. sunrise service at Fort Jackson. We hope to share and connect with you during this Holy Week. It's time to give in our tithes and offerings. Remember, you can give online on our website. Text to give at 803-219-1463. Mail or drop off your tithes and offerings at 5071 Percival Road, Elgin, South Carolina, 29045. Now let's do our offering confession together. As we give today in our offerings, we're believing the Lord for jobs or better jobs, benefits, raises, and bonuses, sales and commissions, settlements of estates and inheritances, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debt demolished, witty inventions, an entrepreneurial spirit for the advancement of the kingdom and blessings for our families. It's offering time. Hallelujah. IP family, let's get connected, get started, and get involved. And remember to love God, love others, and reach the world.
morning. Come on, let's give him glory for who he is, what he's doing, and what he's promised he will do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you come expecting anything this morning? Come on, did you come expecting anything this morning? Or did you just come because there's, oh, church today? We came to give God praise for who he is. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say, be lifted high in this place. Come on, be lifted high in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, clap your hands this morning. Let's worship him. Turn it up. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. Be lifted high. You say. Let's clap our hands this morning. Yeah. We shout the name of Jesus. It's real simple. Let's worship. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. Be lifted high. You say, Jesus. If you love Jesus, clap your hands if you will. What do you say? Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Get something in your hand. You got a palm branch. Let's worship the 
Be exalted in this place, oh God, yeah. We thank you, Lord, yeah. For you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. So we lift you high. We lift you high in all the earth. You reign with power, dominion and glory. So we lift you high, we lift you high. You know, in Jesus' triumphant entry, on that day when they got the palm branches and laid out the coats and stuff, because they knew he was the king of kings. They had heard about the miracles he had done. Some of them had seen the miracles he had done. But yet he chose to ride in on a donkey. To me, signify he is a God that is almighty and all powerful. Yet he'll come down and love on me and say, hey, you're my child. I love you. I may be the king of kings, but I love you enough to go in the mud and find where you are. and bring you back to a place where you are royal priesthood, where you are a chosen generation. That's the God that we serve. So we lift you high. Oh, high in all the earth. Lift you high. Be lifted high. Hosanna be lifted high, yeah, high in all the earth. Oh, you reign on high, yeah, you reign on high. Oh.
consider me in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Nella <laughs> No te me remekiti, elele mokoto shonda inana makaya, elele mokuri remo shonda yarana mekitara, eromo lori remo kote, eromo lolo remo kote inana li remo shori remo kai, eriela mokuri remo shanda, elala la mokuri remo kataya. Inaya, Inaya, Inaya Ramete, Koyana Moshu, Helele Mekiti Mokai, and Nanti Ramokoto, Ramekita Shanta, Inati Ramokuri Ramakaya. If anyone has the translation, obey the Lord. But would you just raise your hands in reverence to the presence of God in this place right now? The day is a special day as we celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Just acknowledge his presence. If you have the translation according to scripture.
So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. We will sing hallelujah. Till you come again, and we'll dance in your presence, oh God. Till you come again, King of Glory, fill this just one. Be with the King of Kings, just wanna be. Oh, yeah. King of glory, feel this place. Just wanna be. Wanna be in your presence, God. Just wanna. Somebody word this morning. I'm saying with you, I'm gonna make it. You're gonna make it because the King of Kings is here right now. Rain came and the wind blew. My house is built on you. He is a firm foundation, yes, he is. to 
주세요. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Cause my house is built on you. My house is built on you. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Cause my house is on a sure foundation. My house is built on you. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. The king of kings. He will never fail you. Any hurt, any answer, I sought the Lord. Any hurt, any answer, that's why.
That's who I put my trust in him. And because of, I say will, no matter what, I'm going to make You better tell yourself, I'm going to make it through Jesus Christ. Rain came and the wind blew, but my house was still on you. Oh, I'm saying that I So thankful, yeah. I'm so thankful, yeah. So thankful that he is the king of kings. Let our King hey, be lifted up hey, for what He's done, hallelujah. what He's doing, hey, what He's going to do. Hey, Let our King hey, be lifted up oh, my with dominion and power He has. of my King. 
All my failures have been cast upon the wind By your grace that never fails to draw me in Into your love oh. I'm seated at the table of the King I am poor, yet in your mercy. In a way this world can never hope to give. Yes, I'm undone. Yes. Oh, Jesus. You. A broken melody, a humble sacrifice, oh Jesus, we love your name, we bless your heart, and we give you
Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has already spoken, and he has said that he will deliver miracles. Amen. Then the Psalms talks about he will not deny. Amen. And so maybe you might feel this morning broken or maybe there's something physically going on in your body. 
I want you to ask yourself this morning, do you really believe? As we celebrate Palm Sunday and we call out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Do you believe that as he made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem that in essence what he was doing, you'll hear me say this a little bit more, he come to break the curse from Genesis. Right the wrong, if you will. To where, listen, where the enemy took dominion over you, now he's given you the ability to have dominion over him. Amen. And so I just simply believe that it's time for us to stand up and declare, amen, activate our faith, if you will, amen, that he is a miracle-working, supernatural, omnipotent, all-powerful God. And so regardless of where you are this morning, I want you to, I want you to believe this morning, as I look around the altar this morning, a lot of the people that came to the altar was, is our leaders. And so the Lord is saying something to us this morning. And so this morning, as, as the Holy Spirit has already spoken through tongues and through interpretation according to the Word of God, amen, it's not just an ordinary day. You can make it ordinary, but it's not just an ordinary day. The Lord is speaking to us, and it's up to us to say, I receive it or I don't receive it. And so this morning, I'm standing in faith, and I'm believing because I know there's people in this place who needs God's divine miracle healing power moving in their lives right now. And listen, I'm, I, I believe he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe if he touched me at 12, he can touch me at the age that I am now. Amen. So regardless of what you're going through this morning, I want you to take your palm branch if you feel like. Your palm branch can be your hand. It can, you can raise it up. You can put it down. You can put them together. I don't care how you do it. But somehow this morning as we sing that just a little bit more, I want you to believe this morning that he says he will not deny. Amen. So I want you to believe him for it right now. Whatever it is, Whatever it is that you're asking him for, as long as it lines up with the Word of God, I want you to believe right now that he will not deny. Amen. Come on. Just believe it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's worship one more time, and we're going to go to the Word. Amen. Oh, Jesus, you won't deny. I would just come to the we altar. If you need a miracle, I'd just come to the altar. You need a miracle, just come to the altar. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. You need a miracle, just believe it for it.
are broken for you. We are broken for you. We are broken for you. You are the potter. We are the clay. Won't you shape us? Won't you mold us? Won't you change us? proud to say, I need you. I'm not too Set far us. turn around. Let it be so, God. God, divine intervention in the name of Jesus. Cause it's so. the humble who receive you. Yes, Lord. I need you. Yes, Lord. You. Touch your daughters. Touch Regina. I need Touch Alfred. In the name of Jesus. Touch I'm the Lord. not too strong. You believe him? I believe you. you said your grace. I believe you. So if it's broken, then you're out of Touch me in. I need. Touch me in, God. Touch him, Lord. Touch me in. Come on. I'm not too proud. I'm not too proud to say I need you. Yes, Lord. Just like the yes, prodigal Lord. son, because it's a humble game. 
Ben, Ben, stand up for me if you don't mind. Stand up for me. What are you asking the Lord to do right now? Guidance. You sold out? You ready? You know, sometimes the things we go through is because we're like this. One foot in and one foot out. But as you stand on the altar today, I want you to say, I'm all in. Tell him, say, Lord, I need your help. And I thank you for every trial, every tribulation. And I'm sorry for abandoning you, for trying to find it in other ways. Only you can feel the empty void in my life. And I want to put you first. And so I say, Hosanna. Blessed are you who comes into my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Say, Lord, I receive you. Breath of God, breathe on me a fresh anointing like you did with the disciples. Pour out your spirit upon me. Fill me in Jesus' name. I receive it now in Jesus' name. I receive my miracle. I trust you. Even when it doesn't look like a miracle yet, I trust you with it. In Jesus' name. There, 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 there. I remember at 12, laying on the floor like that, and I couldn't get up. I felt like I was metal on a magnet. And the Lord said, you can't even get up. Unless I let you up. Amen. Thank God he let me up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you just let me share with you for about, I'll try to about 15 minutes. If you'll give me 15 minutes, I'll try to, I'll try to summarize as much as I can. I'll have to go through my... My, my message this morning. Today is Palm Sunday. You, you, and if you're at the altar, you, you, you're welcome to remain at the altar. Amen. We just came out of a conference. And in that one of that, in that conference, one of the things the, the minister said to me or said to us, we started worshiping at 7 o'clock. And he didn't get them. The pulpit till nine, and, and and it was good. It was prayer. It was genuine. It was it was worship. And he said, "You take two, And he said, "You expect me to give you the word in thirty? But it, and listen to me, the word is what breaks the yoke of bondage off of our lives. Amen. And that." And, I, and listen, I, I know it's Palm Sunday. You probably have meals ready. But if you don't mind, just, just for a moment, in, in, in the book of John, chapter 12, y'all, y'all, y'all can, you can just stay with me if you don't mind because you'll probably help me out. What we're doing is we're looking at the final account of Jesus' triumphant entries into Jerusalem for his final week of ministry as he goes to the cross. And when we look at the Bible, we look at the accounts from Matthew 21 and Mark 11 and Luke 21. John writes 
30 years later and gives us the full and the, the final pieces, if you will, to describe the final week of Jesus. And so it's much like the movie, if you will, taken where it was written and, and choreographed and made in, in black animation, and then it is transformed into a 3D form. It's like the Gospel of John just brings it to life, if you will, alongside the other Gospels, better known as the Synoptic Gospels, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where each one of us give, the, gives us the different perspectives of Jesus' final weeks upon the earth. And when we look at the, this triumphant entry, if you will, in, in Jerusalem, 4,000 years have passed since God really, I mean, really, if you think about it, one of the most powerful things that, that has ever happened upon the, on, the, on the earth, God has spoken, and he's spoken the world into existence. And nearly 4,000 years have, have passed since, since sin entered into the world and brought a curse upon it. And now, the Son of God is about to cause the whole earth to tremble. In other words, he's going to come in, and, and as the earth groans, and man groans, and the earth, it, listen, it groans for its redemption. And, but the cre create, when we look at the creation of the universe spoken into existence by its creator, you got to think about it. It was, it was really, it was a, it was a great event. But the, but the universe had been shackled by the power of sin. And the earth is groaning. Did you hear me? It's groaning in anticipation of its deliverance. I mean, it's... It needs the redemptive power of God to come in. And, 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 and some of you may be asking, what, what is so powerful about this Holy Week? I mean, because when we look at the, this Holy Week, you got to think about it. He's betrayed, he's denied, he's whipped, he's spat upon, he's beaten to the core by humanity, he's ridiculed, he's lied upon. He's denied, and then he sold for 30 pieces of measly silver. And so you ask yourself, how is this holy? How is it holy? Because the holiness of all, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world is about to enter into Jerusalem and what he's going to do is he's going to right a wrong. He's going to break the curse that once again gives you and I, mankind, dominion and power over the powers of darkness. Come on, somebody. And, and so he says this in John, he tells us in John 10 and 10, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and by no means shall it hurt you. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And so I want you to think about it this morning. On Palm Sunday, Jesus entered, entered Jerusalem ex at exactly the time the Passover lambs were to be chosen. He proclaimed himself at, at this time, at an appointed time, as being the Messiah. In previous times, he would do miracles, he'd do signs, he'd do wonders, he'd breathe on the 70, he'd send them out, the, and the demons would be subject unto his name. But at this time, on this, palm, on, on this Passover, he's going to declare, I'm the Messiah. He's going, he is going to fulfill Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. And this is what it says, Rejoice, O daughter of Zion. 
Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming, and he is, listen, he is just and just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, I want you to think about that. That's a miracle all by itself. Because he told them to go to a man's house, not even being asked, and, or someone's home. Didn't say it's man, woman, who it was. But he goes over, they go over, and they said, get, a, get, a, get that colt, get that donkey. Amen. And he says, and, and bring him. And he says, and if they ask you anything, tell them why you're using it. And miraculously, they go exactly where he tells them to go. And he shows us his, his omniscience that he is all-knowing. And I just have to believe that God had already spoken to the owners of that colt and that donkey. And God had orchestrated it all. Amen. But here's what I want us to, I want us to realize this morning. And, and I, we, most of us know this, but just in case you don't, you don't know this, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Can I say, can, you, can I get an amen? And so this Wednesday night, we're going to celebrate the Passover as a reminder of the great exodus when the children of Israel left victoriously from the bondage of Egypt. Amen. And so each year, when you think about it, the Jews would celebrate the feast of the Passover. And, and what they would do is they would take this lamb and, and they would bring it in. They'd pick it. It had to be perfect. It couldn't have issues with it. And so God used the Passover as a cog, if you will, in the annual life of a Jew to keep their eyes on the future that would ultimately point to a time when the Passover lamb would come and fulfill. Amen. The ultimate fulfillment. Because when God looked upon the face of the earth, when he's looking for a man, there is no man on the face of the earth. And so when the, at the Feast of Passover, typically there would be about a million people that would be there around the time of Jesus. All of them, amen, bringing sacrifices. And when they would look for someone to, to use, guess what? The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. Not one, but there is one on this day. It's not a physical lamb, but it is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And his name is Jesus, the son of God. Come on, somebody. Yeshua, Emmanuel, God with us, fully man and fully God. Amen. And so Palm Sunday for us as Christians is the beginning of Jesus' final week that records the fact that as the Jews were picking their Passover lamb, Jesus was picked to be ours. And so here's the issue. Sometimes what, what's happening is we're looking for the Passover to come in physical form. We're looking for a physical lamb. And get, don't get me wrong. Jesus was fully man, but he is also fully divine. What the blood of bulls and bullets could not do, amen, or lambs or pigeons or doves, whatever sacrifice you were to bring to the temple on that particular day, what they could not do, the blood of Jesus could do. And so he is the lamb of God. He, he is the promised suffering king, and he came as a lamb. Amen. And he came riding on a donkey. He is the fulfillment of Isaiah 53. Amen. But I want to tell you something. When he comes back, he is not coming riding on a colt. He is not coming riding on a donkey. The next time he comes back, the eastern clouds will split open and he will set his foot upon the Mount of Olives. And guess what? Listen, on his vesture will say, King of kings and Lord of lords, and he'll come on a great white horse. And out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword. He didn't come to wage war. He come to destroy war, war with his word. Somebody give him praise right now if you don't mind. 
But on that particular day, there were people there, and what they were doing was they had palm branches, and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They had heard about all the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that Jesus had performed, and now they, they want him to become the king of Israel. And some of them were there, and they were there to cheer. They were there to worship, and they were there to follow him. All the while, there was other people who did it. They were so caught up in getting their animals and getting them to the slaughter to get them to bring them as a, as a sacrifice that they missed out on looking forward to when the Passover lamb would come. And so they missed it on that day when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, fully human, fully divine, came to the earth. And he, as he made his triumphant entry in, they were so busy about the ritual that they missed the relationship. And so if we're not careful, we'll come to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and we'll get caught up in the ritual of, a, of religion instead of having a relationship with the king. And what happens is we'll be riding on the back. I mean, we'll be, we'll be like the donkey, if you will. Listen, we'll be stubborn, but listen to me. Some of you need to get Jesus on your back, amen, instead of trying to get Jesus off your back. Oh, God, I don't know what he's saying to somebody this morning, but listen to me. He's been on you. He's been after you, and you're acting like a donkey. You're, bump, you're bucking against anointing in the presence of God, and God just said, calm down, you little donkey. Oh, help me somebody. Look to your neighbor and say, he's not talking about you because you're not a donkey. I, I, I'll keep it sanctified this morning. But sometimes we act like a donkey and we need somebody to tell us we need to get the donkey out of us and get Jesus on our back. Somebody give him some praise in this place if you don't mind. And so on the 10th of Nisan, the arrival of Jesus was, was, was the, one of the greatest prophetic moments in history. Jesus hit Jerusalem with a prophetic accuracy, just as Daniel had prophesied in Daniel chapter 9. Jesus came on the very day and hour that God had set in, in his mind for his son to come when the fullness of time can come. And it was an exact fulfillment of a, of a precise prophecy prophecy because God's word is unstoppable. Listen to me. There's one thing you can be sure of is that God keeps his word. You can count on it. You can trust him for it. You can believe his word. If he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Can you give him praise for that if you don't mind? Of which, listen to me, brings me, brings me to my second point. God always keeps his word. And so, listen, Christ's final week is fulfilled with prophecies that of old, amen, some written hundreds of years before, some thousands of years before, and all of a sudden, uh, these, these prophecies become, begin to become fulfilled. Listen to me. I want you to hear me. God always keeps his words. And listen to me. There were 33 prophecies fulfilled on one, on one single day when the Lord Jesus Christ died. I'm telling you, you've got to hear me this morning. There are prophecies right now that are in alignment to be fulfilled in one day. There's things that have yet to be fulfilled that God is about to move with and expeditiously uh, um, uh, move them expeditiously forward. Amen. If you think Russia is rising just because they won't land. If you think Turkey is rising, if you think China is rising, I, I want to ask you, when's the last time you've looked at the Word of God and the Word of God tells you that these will be major players in the battle of Gog and Magog. So listen to me, as Jesus establishes the truth by making his, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, his Word also makes triumph in our life when we have the spirit of the sermon to be able to tell the signs and the seasons in which we live. But can I tell you that too many people in America, they are eating and drinking and they're marrying and they're giving in marriage and they know not until the 
flood comes. In other words, there's disaster on the horizon. How do you know? Because the Bible says so. But you, listen to me. We just go through our ritual of life hoping everything's going to be perfect and hunky-dory. But listen to me. I want you to be prepared because, listen, as the Bible declares, these nations are rising because they have to rise because there is a last day coming where the trump of God is going to blow and the dead in Christ are going to rise and the, then, then we who are alive and remain will be called up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Somebody give God some praise in the house if you know what I'm talking about. And so what I'm trying to establish for us this morning is that God's word is accurate. It tells us hundreds, thousands of years before exactly what was going to take place. In Isaiah chapter 15, verse 6, he says this, I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Watch this. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 67, then they spat in his face and beat him. And others struck him with the palms of their hands. And just a few verses later, in verse 26 of chapter 27, the Bible says, Then he released Barabbas to them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. You talk about accuracy of prophets of old, Old Testament being fulfilled through the Messiah, amen, the Passover lamb in the New Testament. In Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 12 and 13, he said, Then I said to them, it is, if it is agreeable to you, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they wait out for my wages 30 pieces of silver and the Lord said to me throw it to the potter that pricely price they set on me so I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. Watch this. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 9 through 10, it paraphrases Zechariah 11, 12, and 13. It says in Matthew chapter 27, verse 3 through 10, this is what it says. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury because they are the price of blood and they consulted together and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day and so how do you get a prophet of in the Old Testament, amen, to write about a future event and you get Matthew to write about what actually took place and they do not contradict one another. I'll tell you how. Because this is not a prophecy of man. It's a prophecy of the Almighty God as he moves upon man. Psalms 41 and verse 9, he said, Even my own familiar friend, and whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Mark chapter 14, verse 10 says, Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the, the chief priest to betray him. Psalm declares it. And ma listen, Mark declares it. In Psalms 35, verse 11, I know I'm going fast, but it says, Fierce witnesses rise up. They they ask me things that I do not know. In John 18 and verse 22, he said, and when he said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand saying, do you answer the high priest that way? So in every way, God's word 
promise, Christ's suffering, that final night, it was fulfilled exactly how the Old Testament prophets prophesied it would happen because it was not by inspiration of man, but it was by inspiration of God. So when you take men from old and men of renown of new, and they don't contradict one another, you have to say it has to be divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. When you take a message and you share it and it doesn't die, you've got to understand there's one there's one of two spirits behind it. It's either the spirit of the enemy or the spirit of God. I can tell you without a shadow of doubt in my mind that this word is written by the Holy Spirit inspired by God. Come on somebody, give God praise if you don't mind in this place. Because you know what I know? God always, I'm going to say it again, God always keeps his word. If God tells you it's going to happen by God, it's going to happen just like God said it would happen. Amen. I could go line on line. I've got, I've got several more here I could tell you. But listen, each dreadful detail of Jesus' suffering is captured hundreds of years before it ever happened. From the unnatural darkness that happened on that day to the mocking of the priest and the others at the, front of the, the foot of the cross to the sufferings caused by the crucifixion process they were recorded hundreds of years before. To the piercing of his hands and his feet. To the stripping of his garments. To the gambling of his possessions. Where they cast lots for his garments. To his awful thirst. And despite the intensity of his sufferings, none of his bones would be broken and foretold. Amen. Psalms 22 and verse 1. Jesus said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Amen. And I'm sorry, he didn't say it in Psalms, but listen to me. And he says, why are you so, f in Psalms 22 and verse 1, the psalmist writes, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why, why are you so far from helping me and, and from the words of my groaning? In Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, about the ninth hour of the day, Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, Eli lama sabachthani which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Psalm 69 and verse 21, it says, they also gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. In Matthew chapter 27 and verse 48, keep in mind, hundreds of years before, immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it, with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. In Psalms 22, verse 7, it says, All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake their, the, their head, saying. And in Mark chapter 15, and verse 29, And those who passed by him blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroys the temple and build it in three days. Let's see you get down now, buddy. Amen. In Psalms 22 and verse 15, my strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. In John 19 and verse 28, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be filled, he said, I thirst. In Psalms 22 and verse 14, he says, I am poured out like water. Amen. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is. It has melted within me. And John 19 and verse 34, it said, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. In Psalms 34, verse 20, he, said, he says, he guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. In John 19, and verse 33, and verse 36, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he has all, was already dead, they did not break his legs, for these things were done, that the Scripture should be fit, fulfilled, that not one of his bones 
shall be broken. And so listen to me. You cannot look at the scripture at where God wrote about it. And in, in the, uh, he wrote about the future in the past through his, his prophets. And it come to pass with a 100% degree of accuracy and say that I do not believe in his word. You, you can't do it. You can, you can deny it. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can do it. There, there's people who have done it. Amen. But you'd be foolish to look at the evidence of Scripture and see the fulfillment thereof and see the accuracy of it become fulfilled and say, I don't believe that. Like I preached last week talking about and some doubted. Amen. So let me ask you, do you trust the accuracy of God's Word? Do you believe it to be true? Do you, do you trust the promises of God? The evangelist in, in Tampa, here's one of the things he says. He says, I travel in different countries of the world. And he said, when I go to other countries, he said, I see blinded eyes opening. I see lame walking. Amen. I see hear, be, hearing being restored. And he said, but here in the United States of America, he said, we don't see it. He said, and I've said this before, but listen to me. It's because we trust in doctors more than we trust in Jesus. Amen. We don't, we don't, we don't activate our faith. We, we don't trust it. Because we trust the almighty dollar and we, and listen to me, and, and, and we trust the doctor more than we do going to Jesus. Maybe if you go to Jesus first, maybe you'll have some more dollars in your pocket. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm just saying it's, it's time for us to realize that when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, he turned things that were upside down, right side up, so that we can have an inheritance that we can go and stand upon and declare with faith that all things are possible to them that believe and believe that there are miracles, signs, and wonders who follow them that believe in his word. Come on, somebody. And so listen to me. Is your, is your heart, is it, is it strengthened to believe in his promises? And I'll add this to it, promises. Again, maybe something's happened. And maybe the enemy has tried to get you to the place. Or he's, got, he's not trying to get you. He's gotten you to the place where you don't, you're not sure anymore. But God is saying, listen. It's time for you to stand on his word again, on his truth again. I'm asking if you will stand with me and I'll close real quick. Here's my conclusion. We have three choices. Here's, here's what I want, you to, I want you to think about. Here's three things we should do. And I'm going to be very brief. We should live our lives Like Jesus with a desire to hear God's will. Did you hear me? Matthew 4 and 4 says this, but he answered and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth off of the mouth of the Lord doth, doth men live, or does men live. And so as we read the word, are we hear the word being preached? Are we hear the word being sang or sung? Amen. There's those moments where something drops in our spirit. And we say, where did that come from? Could it be that God is speaking to you through his word? And what he is doing is he's trying to get us to hear God's will. The second thing is this is that we should live our lives like Jesus by seeking God's will. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39, he's, it, says the word of, it says in the Word that he went a little farther, farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, 
If it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Amen. As a father looks upon the earth and there's, and there's not one that will go. His son says, I'll go. Now listen to me. That decision was made before man was ever created. So you say, how is that, how is that, how is that possible? Because he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows every decision you're going to make before you ever make it. Before he ever created us, he knew that mankind would fall. The third thing is this. So the, the first thing is, is you hear God's will. The second thing is to seek God's will. And the last one is by doing his will. We live like Jesus by doing his will. Hebrews 10 and verse 7 says this. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written to me to do your will, O God. Say that with me. To do your will, O God. That's what I want to do. And so Palm Sunday was the day that all Israel had to, pa had to pick their Passover lamb. And so I want you to think about it. I want to ask you, have you picked your Passover lamb? Think about it. They had to pick their millions from there, and they're picking a lamb. They're looking at it. It's got to be perfect in order for it to be a sacrifice. And at the same time, they're inspecting the lambs. Jesus is being inspected. And they're saying over and over again, I find no fault in him. I wash my hands. His blood won't be on my hands. And so he, he's been, who do you want? You want Barabbas? Or do you want Jesus? Give us Barabbas. Away with him. Crucify him. And so we go through life, and here's what happens. We're trying to pick a Passover lamb. And we try to get it in the physical. Did you get that? We try to satisfy the inner longing in our spirit by trying to get it from somewhere in the physical. And every time you try to find it in the physical, you'll always come out of the physical, back in the physical, empty with void in your life. But there's something happens when someone all of a sudden begins to see Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Something happens. Oh, God, I feel an anointing right there. I felt something breaking in the spirit realm. There's some people in this place that for the first time, you've been playing the part, but for the first time in your spirit, all of a sudden something checked in your spirit and said, that's me. I've been trying to get it the other way, but today I'm going to surrender everything I've got to the Passover lamb who will take away the sins of my life. And when the destroyer tries to come, I doesn't mean I won't fight him. It doesn't mean he won't come my way. It doesn't mean he won't give me some more might. It doesn't mean he won't attack me. It doesn't mean he won't try to come against my flesh. It doesn't mean he won't fight my mind. But what that does mean is I'm not walking to the, back, the valley of the shadow of death all by myself. I've got an anointing. I've got the power. I've got the Holy Spirit on my life. And guess what? I need some might in the, somewhere out here if you don't mind. I'm telling you, amen, it's time to pick your Passover lamb and say, hey, stick him on side, pass him on by. In other words, when the serpent comes, you got to say you got to go somewhere else because you're not coming to my house. Not today, not tomorrow, not the next day. In Jesus' name, I've chosen my Passover lamb. Somebody give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. If he's your Passover lamb, why don't you just say it? Why don't you, you're my Passover lamb. Hallelujah. I thank you for the Passover lamb. 
I thank you, Jesus, for paying the penalty for my sin. I give you praise for it right now. Hallelujah. I thank you that I'm saved, sanctified, on my way to heaven. And if I hadn't got the Holy Ghost, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. If I've got the Holy Ghost, I praise you because I have the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise if you don't mind. In this place, say, Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name. In the name of the Lord. My Jesus, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you just say this with me? Say, breath of God, breathe on me a fresh anointing, a fresh touch of your Holy Spirit. Breathe on me like you did the 70. Empower me and send me out that I might do your will on the earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, say this with me. I'm ready to go. Send me. Send me. I'm going to do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you would bow your head all over this, this house. Brother Holiday, you mind me sharing? Where, where are you, Brother Holiday? You mind me sharing the video? Brother Holiday sent me a video. And, and, From what I understand, it's a gathering of sheriffs. I don't know where they were. And there's a report from a sheriff in Ohio. And this is, and, and he, he says, he's given, he's given like a report to his deputies and to the other sheriffs. And he, and he says, you know, obviously Ohio is right there on the border of, of, of Canada. And, and he says, Every day, three times, at least three times a day, China is fighting against us with cybersecurity. Five times a day, Russia. And he says, if you think this battle is just in Texas or on the south of the border, he says it's here as well. And this is what he says. I'm putting you on alert. Because I want you to be sober. I want you to be vigilant. I want you to understand. We're living in the last days. Amen. The things that are going on in Israel right now. Are, I, I'm saying that because, listen, we're about to make our triumphant entry with Jesus in, 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 in heaven. But I want you to be ready. Just in, so, so, so he says, and he says, there are men and women from China and other nations of the world that are coming across our borders with backpacks on. And he says a lot of them get away. And he says, God only knows what's in those backpacks. But he said, I can tell you this. I, and listen to me, not all of them are that way. I, once again, you know how I work. We can't put everybody in the same basket. But I guarantee you, there's some people in, that, in those groups that are coming across that they're meant for malice in our nation. And you listen to me. And we can put all the security guards we want to along the border but until my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and repent I'm going to tell you it's, it's, we need an army we need the police force but we need God on our side and listen to me I don't know where the reset's going to happen but I'm telling you people are going about their normal routine of life they're eating they're drinking they're marrying they're going about their normal routine of life and they're not looking for anything I'm telling you it's time Time to make up your mind. Am I going to serve the Passover lamb or am I not going to serve the Passover lamb? Am I going to live the word in the church and am I going to live the word when I go outside the church as well? I'm
I'm telling you, it's not time to just talk about it. It's time to do it and be it. But why? Because there's a lost and dying world out there that needs to see the B-I-B-L-E on your face and on my face. Somebody said, I'll be the Bible that some people will only read. Hallelujah. And so here's what I'm asking you to do. Wake up. Slap yourself in the face around spiritually if you don't mind. And tell yourself you better wake up. This isn't time to be caught up in politics and all that other stuff. It's time to get your nose in the B-I-B-L-E and say, you know what? I need the spirit of the sermon for the Lord to speak to me and make me aware of the alarms that are going off all around me so that I can be sober and ready and watching for the trump of God and listening for the trump of God to blow. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads if you don't mind. If you want it, we'll share it with you somehow, some way. We'll share it. Amen. I'm not a doomsday preacher, but I am a Bible preacher. And I know what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So if you're here this morning and you're not sure that you've chosen the right Passover lamb, maybe you've tried to do it in the physical, but you say, I'm ready to do it in the spiritual. I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. We're going to say this prayer, and we're going to say it together. And then after that, I'm going to, all I'm going to ask you to do is raise your hand as a sign that you've given your life to Christ. So get, rededicate your life to Christ. Everybody in the house, if you don't mind, let's say this together. If you need Christ, say this with us. Amen. Lord Jesus, I believe you are my Passover lamb. You are the Son of God. You came to earth, born of a virgin, did your ministry on this earth, and on the cross, you took away my sin. You nailed them to the cross. You took on my sins. And I ask you to forgive me, for I have sinned against your word. And I believe you are the Son of God my Passover lamb. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord, my Savior, my Passover lamb, my Alpha, my Omega, my beginning, my end. I stand against the powers of hell, the destroyer, and I say to the enemy, you just lost me today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise today in Jesus' name. You just... That felt good when I said that. You just lost me today. Hey, if he lost you, why don't you just say, you lost me, buddy. Amen. You don't have me anymore. Amen. All right. I'm having fun up here. All right. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. You said that when you came into the church, you wasn't sure everything was right between you and God, but now you believe it is. Amen. I want you to just raise your hand right where you are. Say, I gave my life. I rededicate my life. Thank you for this one. Someone else. Thank you for this one. Someone else. Thank you for this one. Someone else. Thank you for those in the risers. Thank you for that one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Someone else. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, 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 nine people have given their life to Christ that raised their hand. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we give.